Now let's look at how to use our equilibrium constant for acid dissociation reactions, that acid ionization constant, to figure out the pH of a solution. So we've talked about how the strength of an acid is really how much the, the products are actually formed when the acid dissociates. Um, I and mean, pH isn't a measure of acid strength, it's a measure of hydronium ion concentration, right? So to me, pH is a better indicator of the danger of an acid if I spill it on my hands than just the strength of the acid. Because it's really how many of those hydronium ions that are gonna react with my skin are present. And so the pH is going to track hydronium ion concentration and the Ka, is going to track the equilibrium constant and show how much products or reactants are favored, which tells us the strength of the acid. Uh, so if we have a strong acid, then we are going to assume that the strong acid dissociates completely. These are gonna be cases when K is larger than one. So products are gonna be favored. usually significantly. And so we can make this assumption uh, and, and, and get to a very reasonable answer. So in this case, the pH of our hydronium ion concentration would just be equal to whatever the pH is of the concentration of the acid that we start with. We don't need to calculate equilibrium concentrations because we're going to assume that equilibrium is lying so far over towards the product side that uh, any amount of reactants is negligible. And so it's easiest just so, especially within just a few significant figures to just calculate it based on that initial concentration. So an example, let's look at the pH of hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. All of those things break apart, all those hydrochloric acid molecules. So if I have a 0 0.55 molar constant, 0 0.055 molar concentration of hydrochloric acid, which is strong, I'm going to use that concentration as my concentration of hydronium ions. Using this idea right here, that the concentration of the acid will be equal to the concentration of hydronium ions if it's a strong acid. So taking the negative log of that concentration gives me a value that is 1.3. And so that's a, a low pH. Um, it's uh, more acidic than uh, lemon juice, right? And if I get a lot of lemon juice in my hands, I, I notice it already, the skin getting irritated already. Um, so this would be a, a pH of a solution that would be something that I would be rinsing my hands for a long time if it spilled on me. So while strong acids are really straightforward, weak acids are not. Uh, so remember, a weak acid is going to have an equilibrium constant less than one. So our reactants are going to be favored. And so we're going to really need to take into account this equilibrium uh, quite a bit more without any assumptions. And so in this case, we're going to use the Ka value for the reaction to calculate the H3O plus, the hydronium ion concentration right here. Um, and so we want to know what this is at equilibrium. And then we'll be able to plug that value into our pH equation uh, and take the negative log of it to find out what the actual pH of the solution is. And so if we're talking about a reaction that's at equilibrium and we have an equilibrium constant and we're trying to find out an equilibrium concentration of one of the products, then we're going to have to use an ice table. So the problem solving that we're going to use again is, well, the skills we've already built up when we talked about equilibrium and reversible reactions. And so we'll use ice tables to predict the concentration at equilibrium for these weak acids. Um, and so this means that to solve any problems for this, we're going to kind of follow this, uh, these four steps here. We're going to write out the equation for our acid uh, and prepare an ice table. We'll complete it with the given information. Uh, we'll be able to substitute the expression for our, our acid dissociation constant with those equilibrium concentrations. Um, and then we'll determine that concentration of H3O plus from the calculated value of X. Um, and then from there, we'll be able to calculate the pH. Uh, and so we'll be using these two equations right here to do this, along with an ice table. 
So it's probably easiest just to walk through an example to show you this. And remember, we have all of the skills to do this already. We're just bringing our skills about equilibrium with ice tables together with our idea of pH and measuring uh, the acidity of a solution using hydronium ion concentration. So we're just tacking on a step to a, a problem solving strategy we're familiar with. Uh, or you can think of it as we're getting a lot more practice with a problem solving strategy that we've already introduced. All right, so we're going to look at hyd uh, hydrocyanic acid once again. Uh, I've got the Ka value here, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10. And we want to know what is the pH of a 0.5 molar solution. And so this right here is our initial concentration of HCN. Uh, so my first step is I'm going to write out my uh, reaction. I have hydrocyanic acid and water uh, in equilibrium with uh, CN minus and H3O plus. So I'm going to look at my ice table. I'll have initial change in equilibrium columns. I have 0 0.5 molar hydrocyanic acid. I'm going to ignore the water because this is a liquid and a heterogeneous uh, within our aqueous solution. So I'm, I'm gonna leave it out of my K expression. And I know I have uh, none of my products because we're just gonna start with the initial amount of the acid that was added to the water. Uh, so that means that I know my, uh, to reach equilibrium, I'm going to need to form products, right? So everything will move towards the product side uh, to reach that equilibrium phase. And, and that's because my Q value here is really equal to zero times zero divided by 0 0.5, which equals zero. Um, and so that Q is less than our K value. Therefore, it's going to proceed to form more products. All right. Um, I'm also going to write out my equilibrium expression here too at the very beginning. I know that it's going to be my product. So my cyanide ion, uh, this is Ka rather than just K. Um, and our H3O plus will all be divided by our HCN concentration at equilibrium. So let's figure out what those are. Uh, so the change that's going to occur if we're going to form more products to reach equilibrium is I'll subtract X from my reactants uh, and add X to my products. And it's just X. It's not two or three X because my coefficients are one, right? So I incorporate my coefficient here, but if the coefficient's one, then it's just X. So at equilibrium, I'll have 0 0.5 minus X uh, for hydrocyanic acid and X for cyanide ion and X for hydronium ion. Okay, uh, my next step is to plug these values in to my equilibrium constant expression. Um, so my Ka is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10. That's gonna be equal to X uh, times X all divided by 0 0.5 minus X. All right, so now this is a bit of algebra to solve it. I am going to um, try to isolate X on one side and quickly find that that's not gonna happen. Um, and so I'm gonna set this up as a quadratic expression. I'm gonna have something that's X squared. So up here at the top, these uh, X's are gonna equal X squared. I'm gonna multiply the uh, denominator over times my 4.8. And so that'll 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10 will distribute out. And um, Practice this just to get practice with the, the algebra piece of solving these problems. And hopefully you'll come up with uh, an expression ready to plug into the quadratic equation that looks like zero is equal to x squared plus 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10 x minus 2.4 times 10 to the negative 10. And so my a is one, this 4.8 times 10 to the negative 10 is B, and this negative 2.4 times 10 to the negative 10 is C. So I'm gonna use my quadratic expression. I'm gonna plug this in. And since we spent a lot of time doing this in chapter 13, I'm just going to say, I plug this in and I not go through all the detail of work and save the space. If you have questions about this, I recommend reviewing the chapter 13 lectures where we talk about the quadratic equation. Um, 
and try it out and make sure we're getting the same thing. Um, so I get uh, X value that is equal to 1.54917 times 10 to the negative fifth or 1.54922 times 10 to the negative fifth. Sorry, negative. Uh, and so only one of these makes sense. A negative value for X would be a negative concentration. And so that automatically means that the one that's reasonable is that first one that is uh, positive. So that's gonna be my X value. So next I'm gonna plug this back in. And I can go through and calculate all of the concentrations for my equilibrium at equilibrium for each of my reactants and products, but I don't need to. I'm calculating the pH in this problem. That's the point of this, right? And so the pH is going to be equal to uh, my H3O plus, right? The negative log of it. So I only need to know what my hydronium ion concentration is at equilibrium. So that pH is going to be equal to the negative log of H3O plus. So that H3O plus is X at equilibrium. So this is going to be equal to the negative log of 1.54917 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, and plugging that into my calculator, I get a value that is 4.8. So this is an acidic solution. It's not very acidic. Um, in fact, it's possible that like distilled or deionized water would have that same pH. Um, so it's a little acidic, but not too much. Not as much as a lemon at least.